Is it uh, have have in the past uh, hunting and fishing around here been uh, people haven't paid much t attention to the seasons and stuff? Is that well, a... I'll tell you, uh, you know, on average, the way I look at it, uh, the people around here, on the average, most of them would have just as much game without a game warden. Yeah, I that, believe that. Uh, to me, if I want to kill anything to eat, I'll kill it. But I wait. I don't want to kill nothing away from the young ones. Uh, coyotes or nothing. I don't want to kill it away from young ones. You know, they starve to death. But if I want anything to eat in the fall of the year, I, I kill it and eat it. And I honestly believe that on the average, now there may be a few, but not right around here. But on the average, we'd have just as much game if we didn't even have a game more than as we have with them. That, you know, that's my way of looking at it. Uh, you take, uh, we call them a southeastern down in the boot heel of Missouri. There's a lot of people that live down there that come up into our area to hunt. Yeah. Deer hunt and squirrel yeah. hunt. And they'll bring they'll bring ice boxes and they'll kill they'll kill everything that they see. And they kill it for the for the meat. Yeah. And they go back and brag about, it. well I killed 60, 60 squirrels one day. Yeah. And uh, and you have an awful time with those fellows. And they'd come and they'd kill the last one there was. Yeah. And the last deer. And uh, and any time during the year, if they're a squirrel hunting and they, they see a deer, they'll shoot it. And we have a lot of trouble with those fellows. Now, not as much in right in this area as you do have around uh, uh, Van Buren and in the lower, on the lower current river. So you kind of oh, think that... They, they have a time with those fellows from up there. We kind of think then that the that the the, the, the rules are pretty good. Uh, I mean, if it, it's the it's the people come in from the outside, it's a problem. And Bill yeah. does a pretty good job with them. They're more of a problem. Outsiders are more of a problem, and uh, and the game warden will tell you that than uh, than uh, the people that live here. Well, that's what I was saying all ago. They just come up here, they kill everything they can kill. Or you know, if we want anything, if we want to make squirrels, we'll go out here and kill us three or four, or five, whatever we want, and go on. And they're not that way. They come up there and kill as many in a day as we kill maybe in the whole year. And I, just for our part, I don't think we'd have a better problem with game, you know, for us. So you think the people here have a, have a better sense of, 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 of killing game than they don't do it for the sport so much. They do it for whatever they need. And yeah, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. It, yeah, uh, it's a, I'll tell you what, if you just check around, you'll find there's very little, you know, game wasted here. And a lot of times you'll see a fella, uh, well, say from St. Louis, he'll come down there and kill his deer and he'll just take it and haul it around on the hood of his car or something until it spoils. Yeah. And uh, what we don't, we'll just take ours home, we'll hang it up, and never get done, we'll clean it and uh, don't waste it. And that, uh, you know, there's a lot of difference to me there. <laughs> just like the semen of the talker. It, uh, Bird hunters here. Bird hunters here. If they run into a covey, they can, they they're they're good enough a shot, and their dogs are good enough. They could they could kill the last bird in that covey, hunt it every one down. But they won't do it. They they'll hardly ever cut a covey down to less than six. But an outsider come in here, they're not concerned. They'll kill if there's just one bird, and or they'll kill the last one in the covey. But a native bird hunter won't do that. And uh, and and when uh, when there's a, a, a not a good hatch in in in, uh, in quails, well, our bird hunters they they ease off. They'll just work their dogs without even taking their gun. And uh, coon hunters is almost that good at it. And they actually a good coon hunter is. Yeah, yeah, uh, our good coon hunters are. But since these coon hides has got up there to the $35, why, they're not hardly as good as sportsmen as they once were. Well, I'll tell you what happened there. No, the prices got up like cats. You've got people that hunts and traps that don't hunt for the sport. They're just hunting that's for right. the hide. Uh, that's <laughs> what Bill and I had a few words about here a while back. Uh, uh, you know, we'd, we'd got a hold of our representatives and other politicians and got uh, and got a 
uh, the, a closed season on these gray foxes. Yeah. And, uh, well, the Conservation Commission uh, opened up the season on them around uh, the uh, uh, hunters that had gotten it closed. And so I got on to Bill about it. And uh, Bill said, well, you're just wanting to cut the other man's sport off. And I said, well, it really isn't. If it's a sport to him, why don't he, uh, why don't he trap these foxes in the summertime if it's, if it's his sport? Or when he catches one, why don't he live trap? And when he catches one, turn it loose. If it's a sport, I'm telling you, it's not a sport. It's yeah, he's uh, he's commercializing on it, and uh, he's uh, doing it for he's doing it for the money. And really, he's a killing my sport. I'm not a killing his. It's a sport to me. I don't I don't kill him. He'll kill everyone that he can, and he'd kill the last one there was. If it's a sport, let him go out and trap in the summertime, and lose li use live traps and turn them loose. I take but it. But they won't trap in the summertime. A trapper won't. <laughs> Let's. You've mentioned it two or three times about selling dogs too. I, I gather that that there's something distasteful about about the money aspect. I mean, somehow it kind of kills the. If you uh, if you go in for that alone, uh, now uh, all of us, Edward would and I would too. We'd we'd rather you just give a man a good dog, but. Uh, uh, you can't do that. Dog feed's too high, yeah. and uh, uh, we'll. Uh, uh, I give lots of dogs away, and Edward does too. I give lots of dogs away to to friends or young fella, and uh, just trying to get started. And uh, uh, we both give dogs away, and it's uh, it makes us feel good to give a give a good dog away, and it makes us feel good to sell one and the man be pleased with it, and. Uh, most fellows that buy a dog uh, would rather uh, 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 maybe pay you twice what he pays you for it in order to get that good a dog, yeah. and it's a, it's it's not a it's bargain. For yeah, it's a bargain for him. It it, it is, and uh, of course I'm glad they look at it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just like uh, <coughs> the boy there in Montana. You know, sold him to <laughs> sold a dog, <coughs> yeah, and. Uh, he called, you know, wanting one to go with him. I sold him a dog for $300. And he said he wouldn't take 2000 for him. It, uh, he called, wanting to know if I'd sell him another dog to go with him. And I told him I sure wouldn't. That, uh, you know, I had to keep what I got. And, well, the one sixty-two dog that had the number here died on him. That, uh, Howard Olsen, you know, there in yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> he offered me a seven and a half for him. And I told him, I said, that's more than a dog's worth, but I just don't take it. I need him, you know. And he would have given him a thousand for him. Right. Uh, 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 Howard Olson, he he wouldn't hesitate. Well, so he'd give me six hundred for the sister to him. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I sold him another fellow's dog for seven and a half, and uh, and uh, uh, right now, uh, why he wouldn't take uh, he wouldn't take uh, he will sell one twice his money that's back. Just, that's what I say. He just wants to, to see the midnight dog. Uh, he has offered two thousand for him, and he just wouldn't sell him. That's all there was to it. That's awful high for a fox dog, isn't it? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah it is. It, uh, Quite uh, a coon dog. It depends on that. who's uh, uh, who's the placing one? the value on them. Yeah. To him, that wasn't high, but to Edward and I, that's high. <laughs> uh, you take like your coon dogs. Oh, hey, you stand well, just like turning these dogs loose here. That uh, well, mine. If you don't hang in the fence, they come back here and they lay down. For me to come back and pick him up, but a coon dog, you go with him. You don't stand there as big a possibility of losing him in the fence or something because you have to go with him. You know? And then the fur, uh, just like me and Simon was talking, uh, we hunt mostly for the sport. And then boys buy them coon dogs. They're going to pay for him with the fur to catch with him. We want to come back here if we're far enough away from home. And if we're close to home, now I hunt mostly for, uh, more closer to home than Edward does. And uh, and uh, the dogs will be a running, and, and whenever I get tired and sleepy, I go home. Edward usually stays with them, but I go home and my dogs come home. How long will dogs stay out sometimes? Well, it all depends. Sometimes you jump a tie over here, you know, especially in mating season. And that 
coyote may go 40, 50 miles. And uh, then that dog, it takes him a while to make it back. You know, it just, uh, I've had them, you know, be gone six, seven days. And they don't look too good when you make it back, but if they think enough of you, they're there, huh? How long? Six or seven days. It, uh, well, we both have had dogs stay in the woods for 30 days right before we turned them out. In uh, the area? Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right in that area. You take Miss Kitty, couldn't nobody catch her, and, and I, I come hunting up around the springs. And she stayed there for uh, she stayed there for 30 days, and uh, and uh, they'd see her, and she'd put into races. And but when I'd go back after, uh, I'd just miss her some way or other. And then uh, Walter Carr uh, called me up one morning, and uh, he said she's running with my dogs now. And I went out there and uh, blowed the horn, the race is over, blowed the horn, boy, here she comes, just the happiest could be. And uh, but uh, uh, my dogs would stay, and Edwards would too. Uh, if we was out away from home, they'd stay right there for 30 days anyway, well, or maybe longer. Joe Dog, and I lost at Arl, you know, I lost all I never had that hunt. And see, yeah. he stayed there for five months before I got him. Yeah, they'd see him and couldn't catch him. Whenever they'd see him, he'd just get out of their way. And uh, he stayed there five months, and I got him. And where's up there? That's a tail slate 115.